All right, welcome back, everyone, to the Castlevania Ravenloft RPG. Um, last we saw our adventurers. Hello, adventurers. Welcome. Um, Hi. They had uh, an, a, a long encounter over a couple of sessions with the werewolves that uh, Emil had sought to regain control of. Um, Jack Motley had confronted the man that had slain his Herzog, uh, the person that helped him rise to his position in, uh, in his servitude of, you know, that government. And the person who killed him was Grizzlemane, uh, or would become Grizzlemane, the werewolf, which he has now captured and is unconscious and locked away in Van Richten's uh, very secure cart. You guys have all met back up at the cart, um, with the exception of Elias. Elias had been asked to trust Jack as Jack then uh, thrust a sword into his heart and s had killed him. Um, Elias was acting out of his own best conscience, however. He was removing a boon that had been awarded to the werewolves by some mysterious dark power. A boon that was as much of a curse as it was a blessing, and the way that they intend to use it would have definitely been a curse to the rest of the land. Um, Elias had bravely lifted that, uh, even at the consequence of whatever the werewolves would think about it. They weren't happy about it, and that is why he convinced them uh, that he was going to take the punishment, which led to his death. So now his soul is trapped in the doll of Alexandra, which Alexandra's soul was once trapped in when she had died. Uh, this, this doll had been constructed by a madman named Isaac Strozny, who would uh, rape and murder women and then make dolls of them and keep them as souvenirs. But, you know, all that aside, at least Elias isn't falling up into the sky where a giant face was consuming all souls in the world of the dead. And that's where we're at now. We are traveling. Um, you had seen Mr. Jeeves uh, try to keep pace with the cart. Um, it looked like he was trying to do so stealthily, but he was uns unsuccessful in doing so. You, so you spotted him. And once he knows that he was spotted, uh, he gave up trying to keep his distance before he could really figure out what was going on with the group after seeing Elias murdered by someone that he had formerly trusted. Um he has approached the rest of the group and is now uh, walking alongside the horses in the cart. Um, so that's where we're at. Uh, where are you guys headed? Uh, currently, I'll, I'll just pull up the big map here and show you. Uh, we can close close the pre-stream image. And up goes the big map. So on the big map, you guys were in this area so your your cart and whatnot before you got there still in wilderness paths um where would you like to go next or where are you headed um i think they were headed back to van richten's tower i don't quite remember yeah it, i remember that yeah we were heading back to the tower. Okay. Trying to figure out what to do with Elias and how we fix him. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, um, as you begin down the path, uh, you travel for a little bit, and then uh, there is suddenly an unsettling stillness. All is quiet except for the sound of approaching hoofbeats. The foggy mist dissipate for the first time you have ever seen in this cursed land reduced to a low-lying mist that clings heavily to the earth. For what must be two months now since you've been here, uh, you can see for miles around you. Though the sky is thick and gray with clouds, the ground white with the soupy thick fog, um, the air smells if it, if, as if rain will uh, come soon, and a bitter cold starts to creep over your flesh. Well, this is unsettling. Alexander pulls her coat a little tighter around herself. Okay. Um, the galloping that you heard, uh, it begins to grow from the distance. And you see a horse and rider 
is galloping directly to intercept your path. As the figure draws near, you distinguish the rider as a bald man in wizard robes, sporting a Van Dyke beard. The look of determination on his face telegraphs he isn't there for polite introductions. He's approaching quickly. Well, can't really ask Jack if it's a friend of his, because he's like, Merlin! <laughs> yes, uh, Jack, a flash of recognition uh, lights his face, but this is behind his mask. He has ceased his illusion. He no longer looks as if he was back when he was known as a uh, more of a human looking figure behind the mask uh you see his head nod in the direction of the rider elias you see none of this as you are in pitch blackness stuffed into the uh belongings of sunraiser i mean of alexandra sorry um as the rider reaches to where he knows he can be well heard he firmly speaks Friends of Ismark and Lisa, our time to act is dwindling away. Strahd's ties to the ancient land have been severed. The witches, once corrupted by Strahd's twisted influence, are assisting Count Dracula in summoning a terrible force of chaos at Yester Hill. Yet, there is even a greater danger to this demiplane of dread. Once Strahd has severed from the, was severed from this land, his spirit is now unbound even to the dark powers that made him the Dark Lord of Ravenloft. He has been gathering power in the realm of the dead, where spirits do not pass on while in this place. He has been feeding on generations of mortal souls, and now he has the opportunity to, opportunity to ascend to godhood. If the fail is torn between the world of the living and the dead now, he will emerge more powerful than I dare speak. We do have to act quickly. We have to put a stop to this once and for Please, sir, if you can help us, one of our friends has perished. We need his assistance. We need to bring him back to life. I see. One of your friends has passed. Well, that is interesting, especially considering these conditions. Uh, Leo, did you want to do anything? Uh, I'm just curious, actually, if, if I'm back in my own body or, or not. Yes, you've repossessed the flesh golem. Alexander's going to take the doll out of her bag and show it to the stranger. Okay, uh, Elias, you've kind of heard the muffled speakings of this man. Um, in the bag and then when the doll is taken out you can actually see uh, <laughs> that you're being presented towards him um, Leo you you can peer into both worlds and at such a mention uh, you can't help but lift your eyes to the sky and allow your vision to drift into the afterlife where you had spent hundreds of years there uh, Leo glimpses the inverted world the sky was once a giant face swallowing everything as a reverse gravity flung all doomed denizens into its open fanged mouth. That face is there no more. No. Leo sees a swirling storm. Dark clouds dancing with jagged streaks of lightning swirl into an enormous funnel. A tornado that reaches its tendril downward and lashes the earth seeking destruction. The funnel looks to be moving slowly towards Castle Ravenloft. And Leo, you're the only one that can see this. Literally. There was once a face of evil. There is now a storm brewing over the castle of Ravenloft. It is gathering there tonight. So Elias doesn't see this either? Uh, Elias, no, you are actually uh, seeing the world of the living and that only. Okay. You seem to be bound to this doll unable to move, unable to speak, but you can hear and, and see things. Um, the wizard looks at the doll and he says, what I say next may influence asking or seeking his resurrection. But I am just a wizard. I, I don't know any holy magic that could bring him back. Perhaps a wish 
but it's beyond me at the moment. Uh, you hear something awful. Was it a roar? A moan? It sounded so large in scale that it could only be something catastrophic-like, uh, in a fit of nature, like the earth was tearing itself apart. Your vision goes black for a moment, lasting the span of four stressed breaths. Then suddenly you can mostly see. Uh, there seems to be some sort of dark black spear that passed through you, presenting, preventing all light from reaching your eyes. Uh, this sphere is rapidly shrinking to the southwest towards y Yester Hill. It looks like a solid black mass that passed through you effortlessly and only robbed you of sight. But while you were in the darkness, you felt the, the darkest parts of your soul emerge. All of the temptations, the impulses that your base brain would have, have you enjoy. Does Leo see this too? Or? Oh yeah, you you definitely feel this and see this as well. Pulling out some interesting stuff tonight, Mike. It's, uh... Yeah, shit's going down. <laughs> I see that. With the spear tonight is the gathering. This affected all of us. Yes, all of you felt this way, and all of you have seen this. Uh, you can't tell if it was something huge that moved through you and is only getting smaller because it's farther away. Or if it was something that was as big as the world and started shrinking towards a common point that is over Yester Hill. Heroes that the darkness that stained the land is now gathering at Raven Knot. We must bring back Elias. The wizard's face goes pale, but his look is focused, his words measured, his message serious. The chaos may rip the veil at any moment. Strahd's spirit must be defeated. Dracula has sacrificed the Crimson Stone and part of his soul to accomplish this foul and desperate deed. He will be taking the chaos to the crystal heart of the castle. I must make sure that happens. But I had to find you to bring you this message. I know there is much to try and understand, but listen well. Strahd's spirit must be destroyed right now. Go to the castle. Passed beyond the veil. Find Strahd and destroy him there, where the world is turned upside down. Your friend in the doll is the closest to helping now. Let me be clear. What I am asking of you is to go to the castle and die. Die while you're inside so you're not swept away. Find Strahd's spirit and defeat him there. How will we come back if we're all dead? He just shakes his head. I might have a way. Jeeves steps forward. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Jack says, I'll... Well, let me make sure he hasn't joined us in the Discord, has he? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. I don't want to speak for him if he's uh, if he's here, of course. Uh, Jack says, I, I have a bit of business to take care of, but I can join you soon after. When the Black Mass passed through Elias uh, when, as he was in the doll, his first thoughts uh, immediately shifted towards revenge and acting out against what he had against his party members. Um, the the, uh, the aggression he wanted to act out just being a a very aggressive and just uh, ungrateful and just you know nasty guy for a second and he wanted to just lash out and leave this place or even kill himself for a few moments and as the mass passed over him and he hears this what the wizard said about how he was closest to helping them and that they all needed to go and destroy the spirit of Strahd all of that leaves his mind, and immediately he is back focused again on clearing the land and um, and doing the best that he can for the light of the world. Good, good. Everyone I'm looks. To... Everyone looks to Alex. What does she? What does she say? That there's no time to waste. 
So you will do it then? You will make the ultimate sacrifice for just having a small chance of freeing this realm? Or preventing the godhood of this horrible monster? I don't see that we have much of any other choice. This needs to be done. Then we shall do our part as well. Come to the castle. We must go quickly. So, uh, full gallop. Um, Jack decides to part himself from the party, unfortunately. And uh, he is going to take his prisoner to R Van Richten's tower. Um, Van Richten himself is still with you. And uh, Van Richten would probably look most towards Jeeves, his old friend. Jeeves, I suppose I I shall pass into the afterworld the world to to assist in this. I've already dedicated my life and more, not just my life, others. It's the least I can do. And he looks at Alex with uh, with pained eyes, knowing that maybe some of her complications are his fault for what he's forced her into. I ain't gonna disagree with you. <laughs> so, um, with Jack departed, uh, is the rest of the party gonna go to the castle? Yeah. That's not right. your choice. Um, we probably should, when we quote unquote die, get a long rest shoved in there. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, your hit points are about to drop to zero. There's no quote-unquote dying. You're agreeing to to die somehow. So, your hit points don't matter, right? You're gonna die. No, but I burned all my superiority dice and my action surge, so I probably need those back. Huh. Good, good thought. Um, question. Watch Jack has left. Okay, I mean, if you want to rest before you, you know perform your final ceremony then uh, I'm not gonna rob you of that <laughs> so uh, let's let's bring up Castle Ravenloft here just a reminder of what it looks like I want to live there no you don't <laughs> well you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> die there <laughs> apparently really? uh, you used to live there yeah once hundreds of years ago oh, uh, okay. it's a pretty nasty place would recommend it Yes, uh, well, it, it doesn't take too horribly long for you to approach. Um, by the time you get there, uh, you have seen that dark spot uh, now that the mists have changed, now that they cling to the ground uh, rather than obscure your view across the land. You have seen this, this dark spot erupt into odd shapes, awkward, unholy, twisted shapes that uh, sometimes tear at your sanity. In fact, uh, at one point, as you get closer to the castle, you see it swirl and shrink into the castle, and the noise it makes when it does so, um, it risks causing your sanity to crack. So I will need a wisdom save from each of you. And with a, with disadvantage, sorry. So roll that again, Alex. We'll take the lowest. Okay. Elias, you got a 10. Uh, do you need anything for me to go to, to roll that? Your wisdom is at a, let's see. Wisdom is what? I think it's at a zero, but let me double check. Yeah, I don't even have access to my character. Why not? Because it's a flesh gold. Yeah, it's a zero. Okay. Oh, All right. damn. <laughs> a natural wow. one. Oh, no. Okay, um, 
you go. Uh, Leo can no longer tell the difference between which world is which. Uh, at one moment, you think you're falling into the sky, and the next moment, uh, you think that you're galloping along the ground, approaching Castle Ravenloft. Um, all the all the while, uh, reality is distorted around you in a way that sickens you. Um, you feel no physical sickness, but the uh, the lurching of realities bending back and forth is tearing at your mind. Uh, you you know this is going to cause a problem for you, and you can only hope that it's temporary. Um, Alexander's going to reach out and take his hand. Yeah, he is visually disturbed. Uh, so, Elias, as the doll, um, you've also failed your check. Uh, when the sound hits hits you, uh, you want to cover your ears and block out the noise, but you can't move your hands because they're doll hands, and you can't bring them to your, your little head. Uh, the noise does not stop for you. It is continuous. It's all you can hear. Uh, you've lost all ability to absorb any audio from the rest of the world. The only thing that you can hear is the sickening noise, which is literally driving you insane. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, once you get to the castle, there is the drawbridge to cross. Um, it does look perilous. Uh, how did you guys want to approach? By the way, uh, the wizard... He says that Count Dracula has uh, got to the castle before us. He should be heading towards the Crystal Heart. It has many names. Uh, the, the Alchemist Stone, the Day Heart. It, is, it rivals that of even the Crimson Stone that he sacrificed to call that demon. But that is where he and I shall, shall enter and go to. It is up to you all to find within Strahd's ghost. I wish you luck. We shall soon depart once we enter the castle. And he approaches the gate. Um, you see a green slime drop towards him from the uh, portcullis as he enters, and he zaps the, uh, the goo with lightning. Uh, it streaks across the rest of the sky, but there is nothing left of it. It was a trivial matter for him. And you see him... Where do we go, gentlemen? Yes, Elias, as the noise in your, in your ears is persistent, you slowly see that you're growing closer and closer to the entrance where those fiery dragons had burned you nearly to death the last time that you were here. And in the entryway, as you guys enter, you notice the castle, the walls and everything looks as if it is changing, like it's living. You go, everything is doing this to you even before you came into the castle. But as soon as you step in here, it's multiplied as if a fractal thousand bits of, of stone begin to repeat. Uh, the closer that you look at something, the more repetition that you see. Um, hey, we have a Logan. Oh, hey, Logan. Um, can you hear us? When you can hear us, let us know. I gotta catch you up. I can kind of hear Logan. I can kind of hear him too. Alex. What you notice about this castle is even as you approached it, woo, somebody's interested in what we're doing over here. <laughs> well, thanks for the uh, for the follow. Um, wow, Mark. Oh, it's Mark. Limey TX one. It's either Mark or a uh, a Mark. That's Mark. <laughs> Some sort of uh, Mark fan. What what if it was his biggest fan? That would just be creepy. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, our 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 butler is not with us totally tonight, but he is joining us in this adventure as in character. So, uh, Logan, are you with us yet? 
Because we're getting stuff off your mic, just not I very... Don't... Oh, there you go. No. I can hear some, so we'll see how much this works. Okay, well, to just to catch you up, um, Mordenkainen has approached the party, and he has explained that they must go kill Strahd right now in the world of the dead. Uh, stuff is going down really quickly. Uh, the, the Demon of Chaos has been summoned by Count Dracula. Uh, they're trying to get that to the heart and do what they must do there, while the rest of the party must find a way to defeat Strahd before he ascends to godhood in the world of the dead. Um, Jack seemed like he was willing to go with his friends and join them there. However, he said he had some business to take care of with his captor. I mean, with his... Uh, with his captive first at Van Richten's tower, and then he would join them in the world of the dead soon after. Would you like to describe, if you can, it sounds like your mic is tearing uh, pretty bad, but if you would like to describe what you would like to do in your time there, we're ready when you are, just let us know. Okay. Okay, is now good, or should we get... Now is as good as it's going to be, I think. Okay, go for it, man. Everything went robot-y. Yeah, we're getting the robot tin can voice. All right. Oh, man. I'm going to let... I'm going to make sure Carl's awake. One way or another. Okay, so you've gotten him to the tower, and uh, you have made sure that he was incapacitated before you entered, but you have opened the the, uh, the barred gate on the back of the wagon, got in, and you can close and lock that, self, that, that behind yourself if you'd like. So you're not interrupted or anything. Simple and do that. All right. And then what? Start slapping him till. All right. So you begin to rouse him. And it takes quite a bit of effort because he was out cold. Um, you were very proficient in disabling him. Uh, but he does come around and he says, Oh, I'm sure there's many things you would like to know. Is it there? Have you been seeking me this whole time? Yeah. Or is it just a coincidence that we've met again? I've totally been after you. I made you my life's work in some of a quandary. After I utterly something of a quandary after I utterly that's all I got. Humiliated you in front of your followers. What do I do with my life now? Well, you've wasted it finding me. I find that quite pathetic. And I'll give you no pleasure for any answers you may seek. It's all right. Shoving that potato up your ass was all the pleasure I needed. You have no idea the amount of torture I can withstand. Potato is nothing. He grunts and the potato falls out. Werewolf is. I heard that burnt. All right then. Well, I suppose thing left to do. Do your worst. He growls. Pull out um, silver short and I look. Pull out a silver short sword and. Make it look like. You keep cutting out, Logan. We're getting yeah. like the first four words of your sentence and then it just goes. Oh, 
Oh, maybe it's because I'm here. Maybe my Britishness is uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've equaled out the Britishness. You you've helped the the common Britishness that we have currently. Here. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you, Levi. <laughs> uh, this is not an appropriate song for the moment. <laughs> this is too pretty for now. What's the point? Very song. The one. I got it right here. It's so beautiful. This is more like it. Okay. Uh, yes, Jack. We heard that uh, you you pulled out your silver your silver short sword or rapier, and you said you made it look like, and then I couldn't hear you. If you just want to type it, uh, I can see our Discord general channel, or uh, <laughs> sorry, you're having such a bad audio time. Well, we will leave it th at that. I'll let Jack continue that when he can. Um, back to our party in the castle. So, Alex, the castle to you, you noticed even outside of the castle uh, that things had started to change. The, the towers had started to multiply. The castle had started to grow. Um, this castle is changing, and you feel as if somehow it's reflecting maybe a small part of yourself. Um, in that way, I would like you to tell us how the castle has morphed to reflect an aspect of yourself. What do we see? Oh, geez, that can put me on the spot. Sure, just to remind you, in the entrance here before, uh, there were four gargoyles, uh, well, no, there were four dragon statues that had all come to life and attacked you in the past, but now it's vastly different because now, and you tell us. I have to have the courtyard, I can't have something else. Well, everything seems to be changing, uh, and it's not just you, it's, it, it's being... Um, it, you see aspects of this where rooms beyond where you can see now are opening up and stretching out to proportions that are ridiculous. Uh, rooms that are so deep and repetitive with windows and columns that it could never find any real function in a castle. Um, and in these stained glass windows, you start seeing motifs that look like Count Dracula and Lisa themselves. Um, so you think that it's not only reflecting aspects of yourself, but it's also heavily influenced by Dracula, perhaps for what he for entering first and and for what he's bringing here. But it's also taking aspects of you and your friends. So how would you like to affect the castle? Amongst the many erupting spires, a very tall, ominous-looking clock tower springs from the turrets of the castle itself and rises upwards higher and higher. Excellent. The, uh, the ticking of the clock uh, reminds you of the ticking of that box that you had found that once had drifted you off to sleep. The melody that it played is somehow reminiscent of the sound of the, the gears crunching and turning. And you could almost remember that song when you listen to those gears, but it still escapes you. I need to move quickly. This place is changing so much, we have to find Strahd back. All right. Um, deeper inside you go, and uh, Leo... Once in your mortal life, this place used to be your home. Um, whenever you draw near to something, uh, you see the castle revert back to um, a more well-constructed time, a more, more time of uh, how it looked when you were there. But then as soon as, as soon as you gain a glimpse of recognition, it's torn away with this insanity that you now feel between the shifting worlds. Um, 
what how how do you want to affect the castle the way leo perceives the castle is almost as if uh familiar memories overlapping it itself over and over and over again almost like uh like a room my... full of mirrors that or uh, scales overlapping each other like on a serpent and so the way the castle is structured is with within itself like uh, one tower inside of another tower, inside of another tower, inside of another tower, until it reaches far over the sky as if a armored gauntlet hand reaching out towards the moon. I see. So the fractal patterns that you've been perceiving seem to just go on for infinity as far as you perceive, and the scales layer and lap over each other uh, constructing this stonework that uh, twists down deep into the ground and there you see the lapping over and over of water and beneath that water you see uh, the same sort of fishmen that Alexandra and her friends had fought when they had destroyed Strahd um, one of them jumps up and squirts a stream of water in your direction uh, but you're able to dodge easily Elias, uh, the noise will not stop. However, your soul entering this place at this time also has an effect here. Uh, not all rooms are, are horrifying and, and reality bending. Uh, you bring a measure of holiness, and how, how, does, how does that manifest itself in your presence? Um, first of all, can you hear me? I had to plug in my mic again. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So at first, um, there's no holiness at all going on here from what Elias sees and what he experiences. Um, in contrast to the, the hugeness and the infinity and the, the fractal um, repetitions that Leo and Alexander, Alexander are seeing, um, Elias experiences something claustrophobic. Um, the noise that he hears that does not go away starts to, to meld and mix with the dragons that he sees around him. Uh, the statues seem as if they come to life again and they surround him on four sides and he tries to to ignore all of it to shut it all out but he, it can't he can't do it it's impossible the noise mixes with what sounds like obscenities and taunts towards him uh, reminding him of the times that he couldn't do anything for his father and uh, the rest of the followers that he left behind and the failures that he's experienced the people that have died because of him uh, his nose is assaulted with the smell, the same smell of burning flesh he experienced when his dad was burned alive, the same as when the witches were burned. He, everything's rushing to him immediately. Even the fear of dragons he thought he had overcome, it's just coming to a head. The smell, the sounds, the sights, all the fears all at once. And what he tries to do in that moment is cast um, any magic he can think of. All the spells are jumbled in his mind. He wastes two spell slots with nothing happening second level and third level and with a next but he will get one thing off and he will try to cast let's see lesser restoration on himself to to shut out the sound so he can hear again so uh reality is not acting as if it normally would and you have no control over your hands or your you cannot make a sound so casting in this case isn't in the traditional sense but you are finding your own inner voice and just screaming to god uh these prayers that you use to channel his divinity into a manifested reality the effects and the spells that you do cast and with this prayer something gets through and that is uh, the Lesser Restoration spell, which ceases this cacophony in your head. Uh, you can once again um, hear. However, the, the memory of this sound will forever haunt you. It does. And um, as Elias does that, and as things start to, 
So even now, things are still not normal. They're still scaring him. Things are still awful. But as the, the noise passes, uh, he says a prayer of thanks to God. And as he, as he looks around, um, the castle takes a, a different shape. It reminds him of the, um, of the abbey of where he was from with the, the church hunters training. And uh, it reminds him of the letter that he just wrote. And he sees men sitting around, uh, and he knows immediately without them saying anything that they're waiting for him to return. He sees a, a young little girl crying in a corner, um, wishing for her adopted father to come back. Um, his heart is broken with this, and it's much more of a, a somber and um, it's more of a silent reminder than something that scares him. But it also fills him with determination to carry on. And he gathers himself and what he set out to do and originally he has to get back to so he regains as much of his sanity as he can all right uh for mr jeeves um i would love to ask him what his influence in the castle would be i already like the scales that uh that Hugo had mentioned um any suggestions on how mark's character would affect the castle any contributions to maybe future Castlevania lore? Ninja maids. What was that? Ninja maids. The ninja maids with the vacuum cleaners? Uh -huh. <laughs> I... Couldn't help, but sorry. Oh my god. Anyone else? I hadn't thought about the angle with the like, influencing Castlevania design. If, oh man, that would have been... Well, I, you... about... well, I was you... expecting you to pull off the chapel, Brent. Jesus. Well, I didn't see where Mike was going with that, but I could have, yeah. Oh, April totally got it. She she's created the clock tower. Uh, yeah. Well, you can have an. I mean, it's not too late. It's no one's done anything. If you'd like to add to yours. So Elias, he sees himself. He sees a projection of himself, and he recalls his younger training when he was uh, studying under his father and his leader, about when they used to still run a confessional. Uh, it was an old practice, but something Elias held some familiarity for, and um, he kind of missed the camaraderie he shared with his brothers as they were doing that together and practicing. And he sees himself um, in a blue robe, sitting down in a, an empty chair as a ghostly figure. And he sees this figure cross himself as it uh, soon after vanishes away. As, um, as Elias sees this, he thinks to himself, you know, there is something to be said for a uh, confessional. Um, uh -huh. We may have to work this um, back into our studies. Excellent. Uh, yes, so a confessional room has formed in the castle uh, reflecting your, uh, your appreciation for confession. All right. Uh, hopefully it won't also have that, that dark side of you that flashed earlier. <laughs> so that will be Elias' shadow from earlier in the campaign. Mm. Ooh, okay. <laughs> nice. All right. Oh, so for Mr. Jeeves, as you walk through this, uh, this castle and you see the rows and rows of armor stands that you had uh, gone through and you reach the chapel area uh, with all of the pews and, and where you found the holy symbol earlier... Um, the balcony high above uh, where Jeeves had went to inspect ahead of the party to discover what was up there. Uh, you start to notice that the architecture looks like, um, you know how Jeeves this whole time has been climbing up walls and on ceilings. Uh, it, it makes itself in a way to where it looks as if the top of the top of all of the castle's architecture could, was intended to be walked upon. If you had flipped the castle upside down, uh, it would feel as natural and designed to be uh, used upside down as it would right side up. So that reflection of Jeeves has permeated through this this design. Um, for Van Richten, uh, when Van Richten sees the chapel, uh, you notice a room off to the side, uh, to the right, and inside this room... Uh, a, f a warm golden glow uh, spills out onto the floor and you see a statue of an angel. Uh, it looks like she she is beckoning you to safety 
uh, not with a beckoning pose, but just the, the light that's coming from there. This looks like a room where you can uh, take a moment to regain and uh, take a short or a long rest there. So Van Richten says, let us seek shelter in this place first. We have a foul deed to commit. How do we do this to ourselves? What do we do? And what of Elias? We can't leave him trapped in this doll. If we were to pass and he's trapped in this, I, we would be without him there. You were the one that brought me back the first time. How did you free me from the... I don't know if anything like that will work here. I could take him out of the door if needed be. Well, that's worth a try. Come, my friends, let's go to this place with the statue. As they are approaching the safety room, one more twisted vision cracks through like lightning through the castle. And somewhere in the depths of it, you can hear rows upon rows upon rows of stone stadium seating building up with a dirt floor sinking to the and a throne perched over overseeing it all. So Alexandra's love for battle has manifested itself into some sort of coliseum. Indeed. Excellent. All right, so you all enter the save room, and uh, 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 there you take a moment. Everyone's health is regenerated. Everyone gets the benefits of a long rest. So the game is saved. All right. Let's see. Rest. Long rest. Okay. So everyone's back at full. Um, before we go any further and you think about how you all want to die, uh, let's see if, if Logan has um, given me anything to work off here in the Discord. Uh, he is going to raise his short sword high and release Carl. Uh, he cuts his bonds. What else, Logan? Uh, you've got my attention right now. I can hear you. All right. Well, if you can hear me, <clears throat> I can. Yes. Excellent. Then I'm going to give him a little, uh, bring it two finger. Like, come on, let's do this again. Rematch. Uh, he looks like he's confused for a moment, but then you see a wicked grin and his claws, uh, he wrenches his fingers to where the nails are ready to strike. And you see the fur on his back uh, raise. And he does not care about what reason you may have for letting him get a, a free hit on you, but he's going to take it. So he leaps across, and what do you do? Uh, you want to take a reaction? He's attacking you. Sure. My reaction is to lean back, let him come, and say this is the only way you could ever beat me. All right. Uh, as the words are not even registering yet in his mind, uh, he's just let himself enjoy the bloodlust of ripping you to shreds. Uh, you don't know if he held some sort of grudge against you this whole time, but you can feel the hatred in his claws as they rip through your flesh and bone, which try to mend, uh, even though this, this werewolf no longer has supernatural capabilities. Um, he is digging into you as fast as you're healing, and if you don't do something about it right now, uh, you think he's going to inflict more damage than you can soak. I'm going to lean forward and whisper in his ear, in the name of the Crusader and God above, I forgive you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Carl finishes you with a howl. Uh, the night air is, well, it's not the night, but the, uh, the air is pierced with the sound of bloodlust and victory as he devours, uh, part of your corpse before attempting to break out of this prison and return to freedom where he will exact his revenge upon Emil and the rest of the werewolves that have betrayed him. Uh, your soul is ripped from your body and thrown into the world of the dead uh, you slam up against the top of Van Richten's uh, 
cabin where you were keeping Carl. And uh, you feel like you could still shapeshift um, if you wanted to into your raven form and fly effectively here, though. Go to hybrid. Okay, you go to hybrid. And uh, unfortunately, um, it looks like you're trapped in here. How do you want to get out? The iron door is shut. Hmm. <sighs> well, let's see if spell casting works on this side. Uh, misty step to the other side of the gate. It works like a charm. All right. And as soon as you're outside, though, if you're not flying, you're falling upwards. Uh, the the sky is just this swirling mass of... Uh, oh, I'm flying. <laughs> okay. Uh, regardless of your flight or not, you can see this gigantic, enormous tornado uh, swirling towards Castle Ravenloft. It looks like it'll be there any moment. Uh, if you try, you might be able to... Uh, you're not going to be able to catch up with it, but you can get there soon after it does. Um, you know your friends are there at the castle, and uh, the sky above you, uh, the part that's not a giant funnel... Is just dark clouds that are dancing with jagged lightning, and you see flashes of bright illumination deep within these dark clouds as others uh, streak across. So, onward you go to the castle, huh? Well, gather up my things in like a backpack or something so I can bring them with me. Sure. Because even soul form, I imagine, they've all fallen off of me like they does. Yeah, yeah, they did. They fell and they, they, they flung up, but um, you're you're used to this contingency when you shapeshift, so uh, you had already prepared for uh, okay. for that. Um, in which case, the next thing I'm going to do is uh... Well, hmm. I don't suppose there is anything I can do in the immediate sense except follow the tornado, right, Mike? Uh, well, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but yeah, that definitely seems to be the most urgent destination. It's going to take you a, a good little bit to travel. Your friends were traveling during this time as well, and you're not sure how much earlier they will get there before you do. But judging by the tornado, uh, the tornado will get there before you do. But whatever will they do without the strength and wit of Jack Motley? <laughs> well, you got to get in there and find them. You had some business to take care of. It's understandable. Catching up with them? Hey, they have to kill. They haven't even killed themselves yet. You're already dead. <laughs> well, I had some business to take care of. It's not fully taken care of. I do have a plan. Um. Hmm. I suppose I can settle up with Carl at any point. Um, okay, go after them. All right, back in the save room, everyone has taken a good bit of time to rest. And as you do, you hear the walls of the castle shudder somehow. Um, it looks like uh, it is slowly taking some sort of shape. I won't say a final shape because you still see some modifications still happening. But uh, it looks like the castle has settled to its uh, chaotic ways for a moment. And um, you feel something in the air change as if, um, as if daddy's home. And the presence of Strahd uh, permeates his castle. He's here. I can feel it says Elias in his head. Everyone else in the world of the living, uh, what would you like to do? I will assume, though, Mike, that nothing has changed, right? Nothing in that regard has changed yet. For you personally. Okay. Since they're still in the cover of the safety room, Alex is going to draw the 
rat dagger from her back. The rat dagger? Yep. <laughs> okay. That's the way you want to do it? The rat dagger? Dagger or sword? She's not going to whip herself to death. That'll take forever. <laughs> that would be weird. Um, Knowing the thorns of the others. What, Leo? You look like you have something to say. I could possibly do this without any bloodshed. That would be preferable. She'll tuck the dagger back into her belt. What did you have in mind? Leo makes another attempt to pull away from his body. Uh, just roll a d20. Right. Uh, yeah, it's actually, it works. It's not that difficult for you. I start kind of twitching and pulling at my shoulders and head and then you see uh, a semi-transparent glow emanating from uh, Leo's body as it slowly rises away from its person and it's almost as if he's shedding his uh, vessel right off of his uh, ghost form. And... Shedding his skin, literally. Yeah. And now stands before you as a as a spec. Alright, Spectre Leo, what do you want to do? Grab my hand. He, he reaches out to uh, Alexander. She hesitates for a moment, but then slowly reaches out to him. Leo's going to try to grab her soul's hand right out of her body. Okay, with disadvantage, roll a wisdom check. Who, me or him? Oh, Leo. Your wisdom's at zero, so just two d20, and we'll take the lowest. Oh, it dropped Ooh, a nat nice. 20. Um, you go, you see the world flip-flopping back and forth in your mind, and you catch yourself right before you just straight-out murder Alexandra. Uh, the thoughts of ripping her soul out of her body for a moment uh, in your insanity and confusion, you almost just rip her arms off. Uh trying to take her soul out but you realize that what you're doing is not going to work that you can't just you know take someone's soul peacefully out of them uh you almost did it anyway but you've caught yourself uh so much for not doing it with bloodshed in this method good save The castle is disturbing my concentration. I almost took you apart. It's all right. I didn't think there was an easy way to do this anyway. She's no. going to take the rat dagger back out of her belt. Well, uh, Mr. Chief says, Huh, I've always wondered how it was going to go. Maybe I should, uh, like jump off a tower or something. And land outside and get sucked up into the sky, Jeeves. Not a good idea. You do have a point I... there. How about, uh, we just fight each other to the death? I've always wanted to see which one of us was the strongest anyway.
So I wasn't able to uh, pull no. Alexandra's soul? No. Oh man. Sorry. It was a cool idea. But hey, at least you didn't murder her, because that's what almost happened. So, bright side everything. We're all going to sacrifice ourselves. I mean, who's going to bring us? We don't know. Van Richten says, Leo, if I... How can we get Elias out of this doll? We need him here, but, you know, there. You took me out of the doll when you sacrificed Lady Watt. I don't know how you did it, but we're all about to kill ourselves anyway. Wouldn't that be enough of a sacrifice to take him out? A resurrection ritual is what we used last time. I, I cannot perform that. My resources I, are expended. I'll try again to pull him out. Thank you, Leo. All right, so Leo, you're in ghost form, and you're gonna interact with the doll. Yeah. Okay. Elias doesn't see what's happening to him, but what are you trying to do? Leo's going to take both of his hands as he did before, but this time he's gonna pull it right out of the doll. Uh, you're finding no purchase on anything. When you grip for that, there's there's nothing there. You know his soul's in there, but you can't feel it. He's going to see if he can enter the doll and push him out. Interesting. Um... Go ahead and roll a d20. What if we can't get you out, Leo? <laughs> you, you say that right as Elias's soul is pushed out of the doll and Hugo's is now trapped inside. And he can't respond. <laughs> He's stuck. That's all right. As Elias flies out suddenly, he uh, he has a larger field of vision and, and he doesn't see Leo anymore, but he doesn't register that immediately. And he says, what happened? I, I'm i back? Uh, you're talking to yourself. You're in the world of the dead. You're just outside the doll. Oh, well, the others aren't dead? Okay, that's right. <laughs> so they don't even know it worked then. No, they, they don't know what happened at all. They just saw <laughs> Leo's ghost just goes into the doll and that's it. That's all they noticed. Hmm. And Alexander has true sight. Wouldn't she be able to see Elias? True sight doesn't see into the world of the dead. It, it allows it you to see the through the ethereal plane. The ethereal plane. Uh, it does. It does see the ethereal plane. You know what? Why not? Why not just for this one instant? Not that it's going to work like this the whole time because you haven't been able to see the world of the dead and all this crazy face in the sky and all that good stuff. That's Leo's thing. <laughs> But I'm going to say in this holy place, uh, because of the attention that you're paying, um, when you saw Leo's soul go in, uh, you saw a, a, like a flash, a like ghostly flash, uh, kind of poof out. And you don't see Elias, but you have an idea that it worked. Oh, well, yeah. kind of worked. You don't know if Leo got out or not. Um, does anyone else want to try anything? Alexander's going to sigh and hold the doll close. Thank you, Leo. We'll try to find a way to bring you back. Mr. Jeeves says, mind if I see that? He's going to slowly reach out the doll and hand it to Jeeves. Mr. Jeeves grabs the doll's head and twists it, pulls it off. She smacks him and grabs the doll back. <laughs> you grab the doll back, and Leo, your soul is free of the doll. Uh, you can now see Elias, and your friends can see you. And you can see your friends. She puts the head back on. Uh, you no, know, it's it's broken. It's just... <laughs> she puts the head back on. 
Well, you're going to have to sew that back on. It's going to take a little bit more effort than she just puts it back on. Like, you can lick both ends and kind of, like, try to stick it together, but nothing's going to happen. Elias can fix it later if you want to. You fucking better. (laughs) It's a horrible item. It's a horrible, horrible thing. I don't know why you covet it. Your soul was trapped in it. Oh, my God. Okay. Anyways. All right, all right, all right. I am free. Thank you, Leo. You've saved me again. Says Elias from the ceiling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Leo. It uh, is good to be back. Well, if there's no other way. Alex is going to raise the rat dagger to her chest and plunge it into her. Okay. Um, you know right where your heart is and you stop it with the sharp tip of the blade. Uh, yank the dagger back out with her dying breath and drop it. As Can I just give as, him a heart attack or something? <laughs> give who a heart attack? Any of them that's alive. Oh, I don't know, but uh, what you've just witnessed would probably give most people a heart attack as um, Alexandra's blood begins pulling on the ground. Uh, without hesitation, she just offed herself. Uh, in a pretty gruesome manner. You didn't give us much of a choice! (laughs) I cannot stop the blood. Hey, you guys have always got a choice. Everything is up to you. Um, Why did you do this? uh, Yeah, yeah, well, you can actually talk to her ghost. Uh, Yeah, you guys can communicate just fine. We were running out of options, and we're running out of time. Van Richten looks to Jeeves and he says, My old friend, I think this is the end. There's no coming back from this. If we cross over, who's left to bring us back? Jeeves, stay here. <laughs> Not Jeeves, Van Richten. Sorry. Oh. As far as they know, Jack's still on the other side. Well, you said that you'd be catching up with them soon and that you were good on the plan of dying. So they're kind of expecting you to show up dead. Uh, anyways, uh, Jeeves and Van Richten uh, exchange a couple of, of words. And uh, Jeeves says, I know this is hard for you, my friend. And he takes his rapier and just stabs, stabs him right through the guts. Uh, Van Richten looks surprised and horrified as his old friend uh, has skewered him. Um, Mr. Jeeves removes his rapier and all of the sneak attack damage done. Uh, Van Richten falls down, bleeding uh, bleeding out. Mr. Jeeves isn't far behind as he sets his rapier on the, the ground in front of him. Uh, he sits on it. No. <laughs> no, he's not going out like... <laughs> Let's try it. Uh, he will place it under his diaphragm and then just fall upon his own sword. Uh, so he is now propped up uh, on his knees with the hilt acting like a third table leg of his sword as he's skewered up through his diaphragm into his lungs and out his shoulder. Uh, Mr. Jeeves passes from the world of the living into the world of the dead to join his friends. And now you are all together, aside from Jack Motley, which is now entering the castle. Uh, Jack, this castle looks immensely different than the last time you would seen it. It's grown a clock tower. It's grown in size. It's grown multiple different spires. Uh, it exceeds the, the original size of the plateau that used to hold it. The, the whole ground around it has seemed to grow. Um, and when you come in here, you, you recognize aspects of uh, Dracula and Lisa in mo- in motifs in stained glass. You see um, aspects of this castle responding to your presence. How does the essence of Jack Motley affect this castle as it is transforming? This force of chaos is oh, using... good one. Yes, this force of chaos is swirling this into some new creation. Give it the library. I can't do it! Well, honestly, yeah, that's probably what would form. 
a wealth of knowledge and stories shadowed in darkness and covered in old feathers and spattered with stains of blood at this point. Um, when the conspirator... Go ahead. For that matter, yeah, it would also spawn... Um, any of the uh, jester-type enemies that I vaguely recall from Symphony of Night. And the Wizard of Oz references, probably <laughs> Jack Motley. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you created the... Shmoo. <laughs> <laughs> and the Scarecrow, quote-unquote, which was totally a man on a cross, but whatever. <laughs> okay yes uh yeah you you recall the uh the conspirators that had plotted the demise of your herzog uh had done so in the library where you had caught them um those memories are helping shape this as well and you see immense amounts of rows and rows and rows of of books uh just spring forward in into these new rooms um some of these places, uh, not even ladders will reach to get to the books here. And who knows what knowledge, what stories, and, and what is contained inside. Uh, Jack knows a lot of stories. Yes, and you also uh, see something manifest that your other companions did not. Uh, when they passed through this place as mortals, uh, their souls were slightly shielded. You have affected this place in a way that has brought forth actual creatures. Uh, this demon of chaos has now spawned um, different aspects of your darker self into these mindless uh, creatures that will haunt this library. Also within um, secrets are just waiting to be revealed here. Uh, you have a feeling that behind walls of books are the locked away rooms uh, that, that reflect uh, Jack's most inner secrets for what is a castle but a collection of miserable rooms with with secrets locked behind these secrets. doors. Okay. Uh, totally end line later. So you continue your journey and um, you find the uh, the sanctuary there on the bottom floor of what was once Castle Ravenloft. It seems as it's becoming something different now. And uh, when you find the place of the corpses of your friends, you don't find corpses at all, for those corpses are in another world. You find the ghosts of your friends here, and they see you now more clearly, the darkness that you've enshrouded yourself with, the mist that surrounds you, much like when Elias had been called back with the yellow light from your eyes and the, the chanting there, the, the thing that he saw, he sees again. And he knows now that that thing was you, without a doubt. Jack. Alexander's going to jog up to him and throw her arms around him for a hug. Good evening, Alexander. Well, I to see your uh, in good spirits. <laughs> Wow. In Good Spirits, that's the name of the episode right there. there yes, yes. Yes, well, we're hoping this isn't the end for us. Nevertheless, we have a job to do. Allow me to say that an end is but another beginning. Rest assured, we killed this vampire once, we can... So now that brings me a little comfort, but we probably should be on our We don't have any more time We're to We're in the world of the dead. All comfort is going to be cold, my dear. Look around, make sure everyone... Wave at Elias. Then Jack's face. Because he's not where... Actually, I suppose it's a half... Uh, stroked out bird face anyway so he's gonna blanch a little bit sorry about the motion at the heart region the <laughs> sorry I broke your heart <laughs> oh all forgiven Jack but now I have the question again is there any power you don't have 
<laughs> oh, there are more things in heaven or earth, Crusader. More things in heaven and Let's be on our way, gentlemen. We have precious little time left. We have to... All right. So, um... I didn't expect us to get this far tonight. <laughs> I love this, though. Uh, you guys are... Um, at the save room before the final boss... Is there any other preparations you wanted to make? Make sure that our ghostly equipment functions the same as our regular equipment? Yeah, uh, you tested out and noticed that, yes, everything that you're equipped with in this world will function in that world as well. Uh, and you you have this feeling that if you die here in the world of the dead, it's game over. What was that, Leo? Leo looks to everyone and tells this keep in mind the realm of the dead works differently than the that of the living you have to put your heart and soul into what you're doing otherwise you would forfeit your actions you don't have to tell me twice I've been here once before all I've never been here, but it's rather nice. Room. Spirits such as yourself works differently than ghosts. I'll take that as a compliment. Well, Jen is going to head towards the door. It matters not to me if I'm gone forever, if I can do the work I came here. Whatever compels you is the strength you need to defeat Strat. Ah, yes. Ever the good little crusader. How was your date with Carl? Lovely. He got handsy at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I won't ask any more. But I'm still prepared to give you all those moist, squishy details. Slap him off. <laughs> Actually, I think I still have the uh, strength, so. Oh, you do? It's a little harder than I meant to, but. I am Creepy Swole Feather Hulk. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alexandra opens the door, and you begin to explore these new passageways in this castle that have vastly changed since the last time you were here. Inside this this castle before you is a large red door do not hold back Alexander will reach out to the handle all right are we ready I'm ready Jeeves Jeeves is ready. I'm sorry. I expected him to answer for some reason. No, he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, Mark. Um, After you, young mister. Jack? I am ever ready. Leo? Leo puts his hand over Alexandra to help her open the door. She takes a deep breath and turns the handle. All right, uh, before you is a giant throne. The center of this room uh, sits upon a set of stairs, and red carpet leads up to this throne. Uh, sitting in the throne is Strahd von Zarovich. He looks much like he has in, his, uh, in the real world, in the world of the living. Um, sitting in a, a cushy gold uh, encrusted throne um, candelabras to the left and the right of him uh, crimson red curtains behind him 
and he says, uh, more souls to devour, souls that had begun my journey to godhood. Welcome. It is with your final souls and my vengeance paid that I will ascend. And he tosses his glass to the ground. Some red liquid spills out. And he stands up. I'll need initiatives. Die, monster. Jack you don't belong in this mouth. or any world. It's not by my hand. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I got the reference on it. But you like Jack that. will look. You just wasted the blood. I'm appalled. <laughs> yeah, you're not sure it was blood. It could have been wine. Who knows? We're in the world of the... No, I'm just kidding. All right, so I need to roll initiative for, for Mr. Jeeves here. He got a 12 total. Um, Van Richten. You get... Oh, he gets the highest. Okay, all right. So we're not holding anything back here. Let's look at what Van Richten has. He's going to use whatever is the best. He does produce his uh, his rapier out of his cane. So his sword cane is bared. Uh, but you can tell he's ready to use his magic first. Actually, right. he probably um, would have done that before he got in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that he had cast Dispel Evil and Good. Let's see on his self. What's the uh, duration of this? Up to a minute? Mm. Yeah, so he's got Dispel Good and Evil cast on himself that'll last about a minute, and he would have done that before he went into the door. You talking about protection from Good and Evil? No, Dispel Good and Evil. It's going to allow him to break uh, a charm, so like if uh, if Alex got charmed real quick, he could break that. Uh, as long as he can reach her. And, um... Well... Bad well. Protection of good and evil is mine. Uh, it's a fifth level spell. It says dispel good and evil. And it, uh... can break enchantments. Anyways, uh, Logan, what were you gonna say? Um, at this point... Can I go ahead and cast Hex as I was speaking with the uh, Quicken spell? Out of turn? Uh, initiative counts for something. I assumed it was before. Uh, you guys can cast stuff before you open the red door. That's why I'm kind of retroactively doing that for Van Richten here. But Hex is something that you don't cast on yourself. Did you want to buff yourself before you went in? Any in any way? No. Okay. Not that I can think of. Um, oh wait, yes, I take that back. On myself, I will put a. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, the one that makes. I didn't roll an initiative for you either. Mirror image, I believe. Mirror image. Okay. I did. All right. Mirror image is on you. Let me try to remember that the best I can. You remember it too, <laughs> but if I make attacks on you. Three doubles. Or, yeah. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I've got the spell right here. It's just a, a matter of remembering how many are active at the moment and all that other good stuff. Uh, Alright. Right. Van Richten. I believe is eight. 
Van Richten also, before he entered the uh, the Red Door, had cast uh, Death Ward on, we'll say, Alexandra. So um, the first time you drop to zero hit points as a result of taking damage, it instead drops to one, and then the spell ends. Okay? Nice. So, so you have that on you as well. Um, and how many times can he do that? He has... Uh, what is that? That's a level. Four spell. And he has three slots. So he's going to do that for you, Elias, and Jack. So he's used all of his death wards before he went in. Um,. Wait, I need to see what slot that was for Dispel Good and Evil. That was level 5, so he does. he's lost that slot. That was the only one he had for that. Um, level 3 spells? What can he do? Protection from Good and Evil. Uh, let's see. One willing creature you touch is protected against certain types, like undead. Uh, the protection grants uh, disadvantage on attack rolls against the target. Target also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed. If the target is already charmed, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so uh, that's a level one spell, and he can cast that uh, four times, and he's going to burn a level three slot to cast it uh, a fifth time. So that's Elias, Mr. Jeeves, Jack, Alexandra, himself, Sorry, Leo. Uh, all right, so that's all his level one spells. So he's just down to where he can just do a little bit of healing, and you guys are buffed. So don't let me forget, because I'm not perfect, and usually there's a lot going on with Strahd, uh, that you have uh, basically disadvantage attacks against you. Uh, attacks against you are at disadvantage. Um, and you can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed. So Elias can do some of this too uh, before they go in. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I'm going to cast uh, Bless as a level 2 spell. And that's going to go on um, all four of the main party members. So Elias, um, Jack, Alexandra, and Mr. Jeeves. And is this the one that gives you an extra d4 on certain things? Yeah, what it does is. Um, Whenever a target makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, which is up to a minute, uh, you can roll a d4 and add that number to the attack roll or the saving throw. Um, so you, you can, if you want, give yourself a better number for success on attack rolls or saving throws. Um, and besides that, he will also give um, death ward to all the characters that did not get it the first time, um, which I believe would be... Uh, Leo. Mr. Jeeves, Leo, and Ben Richten himself. Okay, be sure to burn those slots. Yep, that's three level fours. Okay, any other buffs before we rush in? Because it's it's happening. Van Richten's about to take the first action. Um, I can add the effect of bless Wait. on everybody. Actually, Van Richten didn't get the highest initiative jack motley did i rolled a better initiative for him than i did van richten so what you're talking about quicken spell for hex yes absolutely you can do that what a, what a, what else would you like to do to start this off you're cutting out logan straw's about 60 Extra. feet away Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm giving everybody the death ward effect on the combat tracker, Mike. Awesome. We heard can you hear me, but that's all we heard. <laughs> okay. Quick and hex. Strahd. Target strength. All right. His strength is hexed.
then kind of stride in boldly, all four of me. Um, yeah. My hand. Hey, Strong! Eldritch Blast. I definitely heard that. You might want to type some of this stuff because it's getting hard to hear you again. All right, so uh, Eldritch Blasting Strahd. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, go to his actions. And here we have... Eldritch Blast. Yep. All right, so casting it. It already... Why did it roll a d4 of force and a d10? What's up with that? 1d10 plus 4? Bless. Oh, bless, yes, okay. So yeah, that, that first one's a hit. All right. And then the damage. You rolled seven plus four is 11. Uh, for the second ray. Did you include the D6 for heck? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, the second one's also a hit. Yes. Mike? Yes. We don't have a Strahd on the combat tracker, nor do we have a battle. Oh. Uh, battle map's not going to happen. Theater of the mind on this one. But uh, there is the okay. straw that you can target. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, so the, uh, the second damage for the hit there is 11. 7 plus 4. That's weird. We just... That was the same roll we did for the other damage. All right, and then I want to add 2d6 for your hex damages. Both sixes, so an extra 12. Nice. All right, so 34 total damage uh, from Eldritch Blast. I just blasted his butt. <laughs> All right, uh, anything else with your turn, Jack? You got a quickened uh, hex and then an Eldritch Blast. Anything else? That's all I can do. All right. Uh, Van Richten is next, and he is going to uh, rush forward with his sword. Uh, it takes him too long to, to actually get an attack in, but he actually makes it all the way up to Strahd at the throne, um, who hasn't even stood up yet. Oh, yeah, he did. He stood up and he threw his glass. But he's still Brilliant. at his throne. He hasn't moved yet. All right, so Strahd is going to go now, and... Um, I need to make sure that I get this right. Because uh, he has some weird legendary stuff, especially now that he's in Ravenloft. So let me just recap here. I wasn't expecting this to start tonight. <laughs> I thought this would be next episode. Well, you kind of warped us straight here, man. Yeah, I, yeah it happened really quick. Um, I, I did want it to be fast paced, but I didn't know we were going to make such great time. Um, all right. He's got a lot of spells here, but I'm looking for those legendary actions. Okay. Yeah, they happen at the end of another creature's turn. Okay. Player actions, right? Yeah, well, no, those are in addition. Um, I haven't even looked at those yet. <laughs> But the legendary actions, at the end of Van Richten's turn, he can spend an action. Uh, so he is going to make a bite attack, um, which costs two of his three actions on... Well, he's got to move first. What's his speed? 30 feet? The only one close to him is Van Richten. So he's going to uh, make a bite attack on Van Richten. Whew, good lord. A lot to this guy.
Okay, Van Richten. Um, it needs to be at disadvantage, right? Because that was a 20. Does he have... Um, yeah, he's got what he cast on himself. Is it at disadvantage? Dispel good and evil. Uh, nope, that's not going to do it. But he did... Um, protection from good and evil too, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And that that has a disadvantage. Okay, so yeah, he needs to roll it again to see if he hits him. And he does. Strahd bites Van Richten. Uh, Van Richten is grappled and suffers about 16 points of damage. Um, Tastes of old blood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, let's see here. Regains hit points to that amount. All right. Yep. And it automatically did it in Fantasy Grounds. God, I love Fantasy Grounds sometimes. All right, so that bite happened at the end of Van Richten's turn, and now it is Strahd's turn proper. And I'm going to review those layer actions as well, just to make sure Strahd uses his full force here. Uh, they happen on initiative count, uh, count 20. Uh, count 20. Who's our highest initiative? We have... Jack. Oh, so that would have happened right before Van Richten goes. Well, let's see what he can do here. God, it's, it's a huge stat block. It's giant. That's not compared to the buff version I've got. I'd like to see your version. Probably would have come in more handy before tonight, though. Huh? <laughs> How's your version different than the standard Strahd? He has a different array of spells. Oh. Uh, he's a higher spellcaster. He has one or two more unique abilities. And he has one thing I'm leaving under my hat to risk ah. panic of what. <laughs> yeah. Nice. He's pretty much terrified that we're too OP and can wipe Strahd out in like three hits, so he buffed the ever-loving shit out of him. I totally agree that he should. I had modified Strahd's prepared spells uh, the first time you guys had fought him, but it didn't matter. I mean, he can... He, in the lore, he's taken out a ancient, uh, I believe an adult or ancient silver dragon on his own. So mm -hmm. he outsmarted it, so he would know to prepare his spells. Of intellect to do that. If you want, Mike, since we're getting close to the end, you could uh, wait and prepare for the fight next week. No, I'm into this. We got another good 15 minutes to go. It, I'm right. just reading a little bit while everyone's talking. Um, let's see. Please tell me that Bob is playing Dance of Illusions. Um, no, it's it's playing Bloodstained music tonight. But it's playing a really good song right now. Oh yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, Leo, your fellow guards from back in the day suddenly appear as a specter to fight alongside Strahd instead of you. Do I know this fellow guard by name? You do, Joshua. Joshua. Why? Why do you side with Lord Strahd? You betrayed us. You betrayed Lord Strahd. No, this is not true. Lord Strahd betrayed all of us. He took this castle for himself. How could you not see this? He built this castle from the ground up. With our own hands and 
none. You will be you will pay for your betrayal. No. You will pay for the betrayal of all of Brovia. Wouldn't Leo be a ghost instead of a flesh golem at this point? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you would have the stat blocks of a ghost. Let me yeah. bring that up appropriately then. Uh, ghosts aren't all that great. Uh, your challenge rating's four, man. Just saying. And you're about to get hit, so... <laughs> Uh, Leo, I'm gonna delete you out of the combat tracker. You're full health, so that's fine. But you're just a ghost at the moment, and I will rename that ghost, turn it to the good guys team, to Leo. Alright, so, uh, Joshua is going to slash at you. Um, let's see here. But he misses, and then he disappears. All right. Uh, that happened basically at the time that uh, Van Richten was attacking, or running up to attack Strahd right before he got embraced. Um, <clears throat> Strahd's still got stuff he can do on his turn, so he is going to attack, continue to attack uh, Van Richten. He's going to attempt to bite more. With disadvantage, I keep forgetting. All right, it's a hit. Uh, actually, you're automatically probably hit when you're grappled from him. I don't know. What do you think, Levi? Well, grappled him. Once he grapple, once he gets you in a grapple, is that an automatic bite? Does he uh, have it's to an roll? advantage bite. Oh, okay. So it would have equaled did out. He, uh, did he take his disadvantage on the? Well, yes, he did, but he he shouldn't have because although he has disadvantage, he does have advantage for grappling if he's going to bite. So they would have equaled each other out. Yeah. All right. Regardless, uh, Van Richten is drained for twenty-two hit points. And uh, Strahd is looking uh, pretty, pretty chipper. Uh, then Strahd takes one of his claws, and uh, basically it looks like a chop, but with his his fingernails, and swipes right through the side of Van Richten, or he attempts to. So let me make that attack. Oh, you fool! Why did you have to run straight up? That will be at a disadvantage too, unless. Uh, do the unarmed strikes also attack? Uh, auto or does he have advantage if he's grappling I would for that too? Say he's not really grappling him anymore if he's raising his hand to strike. No, you can make attacks while you're grappled. It's an advantage again. Okay, okay, so that that is a hit. Uh, the advantage and disadvantage cancel each other out, and the damage from that is going to Van Richten now. Ooh, it's a lot of dice. Uh. You guys see Van Richten slump under the uh, under Strahd as he is being drained of what you would normally think is blood, but because he is a spirit, uh, instead it's like his life essence is just leaking into Strahd, and Strahd is just devouring uh, this man's soul uh, right before you. You think Van Richten may be about to use his death ward soon if things persist like this. Uh, so that was Strahd's multi-attack. Um, next up, Mr. Jeeves. Mr. Jeeves has an ally within uh, reach there because, you know, Van Richten, he counts. He's still struggling against what's happening to him. So Mr. Jeeves is going to use his, um, his bow. his bone bow 
and fire it into Strahd. Uh, because Van Richten is there, he really doesn't want to fumble on this. All right, uh, with the extra D4 to hit, uh, he definitely gets one in there. So let's Mark get some watching damage. Via Twitch, just a heads up. Good job, Mark. Your arrow flies and finds itself uh, into the sternum of Strahd. Well, I guess it can't reach his sternum. Into the back of Strahd as he's uh, draining Van Richten of life. This weapon does 1d6 plus 5 piercing and magic and 1d6 necrotic. So eat it, Strahd. 14 points of damage. He says huzzah. Wait, where's his extra d6? I didn't add it. Let me take that 14 points off. We're going to reroll that. Um, I know he has an effect he can drop for sneak attack. And I want to make sure he gets used. Abilities? Uh, oh, he has sneak attack he said, here. Yeah. Take that strahd 2 point. Yeah. Restrahd it. <laughs> Restrahd. <laughs> oh wait, I added the extra damage to Strahd. That would not be good for you guys. I need to add it to Mr. Jeeves, don't I? I don't know. Best way, the best way to do that is to reset the ability to set, um, cell to target. Yeah, I think I've got it now. And here comes that roll. Yes, it worked. All right, 23 points of damage. That sounds much better. Uh, excellent hit from Mr. Jeeves. Mr. Jeeves is going to um, take up a position uh, up high. So he's going to start crawling up the wall, and he's going to be about, oh, I'd say 15 feet up right now. And then he's going to take his roguish action to, uh, to move another 30 feet up. So he's about... He's on the ceiling now. Uh, Strahd would have to go out of his way to reach uh, Mr. Jeeves. And that's it for his action. Now, at the end of Mr. Jeeves' action, uh, Strahd can do something else, too. Let's see. He's already used two points. God, I, if if I was doing this in paper, I would have all this stuff like right in front of me. But I have to scroll through these giant stat blocks in Fantasy Grounds. Uh. Why is it that I can find later actions now? I can't find his his legendary actions. Come on now, it's killing me. I got five minutes left. I want to see how this goes. <laughs> I was just looking at him a minute ago. Oh, there they are. God, it's like a quarter of the way down in this scroll bar. All right, so he's got one left. He can make one more unarmed strike, and he's going to use it on Van Richten. And the advantage and disadvantage cancel each other out. He rolls a hit. And with the damage, Van Richten is dead. Uh, you see the spirit of Van Richten um, be drained completely of its essence as uh, Strahd continues to feed on him. Death oh, Ward. yeah, Death Ward. Yes, okay. <laughs> no, I don't. 76 hit points then. Okay. I mean, wound points. 
All right. Uh, that sounds like a great place to kind of end up with Van Richten at oh, one hit point. Uh, well, who's next? We got Elias, Alex. Do uh, you guys want to continue going? We have a couple of minutes left. I'm just good. One more round. We can finish the round. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so Elias, Alex, and then Leo. Uh, Elias, you're next. Okay. Um, how far away is Strahd now? 60 Still feet 60. from you. Okay. Uh, first thing Elias does uh, before he starts moving is he casts a uh, spiritual weapon as a bonus action. All right. And that has a range of 60 feet. So he's going to um, to spawn and bring that right up next to Strahd to make an attack on the same turn. Sure. What does the weapon look like? What kind of weapon is it? So the weapon looks like uh, similar to the longsword that Elias started the campaign with. Um, it's kind of just a, a blue floating spectral sword. And it, um, on the hilt, it carries the same uh, emblem as the, the shield of faith, the knight that you've seen before, which is like the the grail symbol of, um, of the faith of the brothers that he shares with. And uh, so that moves forward to attack. And I'll roll that on him, see if it hits. Um, Whew. Whoops. <laughs> Should just be one, the first one. Okay, uh, 19. It looks like it it just rolled it out in the middle of nowhere, not on... Let me roll, let me roll, let me roll the attack on the combat, combat tracker. Yeah. Okay, that's a miss. <laughs> wow. Well, that sucks. Okay. Um, <laughs> you could have just dragged the roll you already did onto the combat tracker. Well, let me no. let me look at something real quick. Hold on. Um, we're not going to let Fantasy Grounds run our fun here. Well, the cast is actually different from rolling the attack. So, because I see it's... Well, maybe no, 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 this is right. I could have used the earlier ones. Yeah, they both would have missed. <laughs> Wait, no, 19? No, it was a 6 plus 3 plus 10. All right, yeah, 19... 19 would have hit. That's up to you if you want to use it or not. Yes. Yeah, we'll use it. Okay, and he casts that as a... Um, oh, it has to be a level 2. So it'll be this much damage on Strahd. Alright, eight. 8 points. And so Elias moves forward, and he gets uh, 30 feet away, but he's going to take an action to use Guiding Bolt. Uh, and I'll cast that as well. Check something on Spiritual Weapon before I do that. Okay. Guiding bolts. That's a hit. Okay. And this will be a level five. So. Lots of dice. Holy crap. Yeah, uh, 28 points of damage. That connects. What does, it, damage. what does it look like? So eight um, balls of lightning, the most that anybody's seen so far, um, swirl around Elias before they, uh, they take a larger shape and, and slam just straight uh, towards uh, Strahd, a sight that, um, that people will come to know later on in, uh, in the universe as um, the holy lightning that the Belnades clan uses. Excellent. Anything else? Um, that's all. Elias holds his shield up, takes a defensive stance, and passes to Alex. Well, he's 60 feet away, so I have enough movement to get to him, and that's it. That seems kind of uneventful. It was very eventful for Van Richten when he did it. 
Oh, she's going to summon the sunlight from her whip to start. Okay. Uh, when you and do that here, stream. Hmm? When you summon the the light here, uh, it somehow instead reflects the light within yourself, and you find that light waning. Not good. That's not good, nor is it helpful. Remember what Leo said. Mm-hmm. Focus, Alexandra. Her hand is going to tighten around the handle of her whip, and she is going to charge at Strahd with a warp. She wants this motherfucker dead. All right. Completely uh, dead. Roll for apathy. Mm. Damn. <laughs> it's 12. You're fine. You scream and run towards Strahd with a, uh, a blood-curdling cry. Good thing she had Bless on that. Yeah. <laughs> I have Indomitable. I would have chosen to re-roll it at least once. Okay, uh, you can get all the way up to Strahd. Uh, he has currently got a very, very injured Van Richten um, grappled. Leo, your turn. There's also a spiritual so, weapon beating at him. So, uh, do I have access to a ghost sheet? Oh, yeah, I can give you one of those. Um, I don't think you're going to like it, but yes here you go uh can i yeah i think that's shared now you can open that from the chat window okay. oh, i can see it too yeah everyone can look at it very charismatic guys <laughs> oh yeah you guys love these things these are what possessed you earlier oh great etherealness okay i like that Hold him still. I'm not sure if I can do that. Why not? He's a ghost. <laughs> do it anyway. Oh my God. You're rounding out the night for us, so whatever you do, make sure you, you really want to do it. Uh... Oh, it really doesn't have much. Got plenty of resistances. That's cool. Oh, uh, wait, undead do you? Yeah. Entities and such. Oh, I guess I'll just try to get close without getting close. Are you gonna scare everyone that can see you? That's not a good idea. <laughs> I didn't say scare everyone. Oh, I'm okay. Just trying to move. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can definitely move. Movement's no problem. I'll just move within 30 feet. Kind of hover about like a ghost. Uh, you... You are looking at the sword that is continuing to, uh, to hover around him, the spiritual weapon that Elias had summoned. Um... You think that you might be able to wield that. I reach out and try to grab hold of it. Alright, yes, it accepts you. Stab it. Okay. <laughs> I am going to slash at the straw. Uh, Elias, would you share the spell in the chat window? Sure. Become the captain of the guard once again. All right, so spiritual weapon there. That's a. Uh... Apparently, I can't look at it. That link doesn't work. Oh, it, it looks like it doesn't open anything. Unable to create window of data. 
Oh, that's if you're cool. dragging it from a sheet, it won't work. Oh, okay, I'll, to... I'll do it. Well, you would have to drag it from Eliza Street. Here, I'll just drag it from the handbook. There you go. No, oh, that's Spirit Guardians. That's Sorry. Spirit Guardians. Uh, here's from the handbook. And if that's not a valid source, then this one will be, because that's from the SRD. I got it. Works. Yeah, they both work. Okay. So, what do I roll to use this weapon? Uh, well, to hit, um, well, let's see, what is your, you just make it like a, a withering touch type hit, but instead of doing um, that damage, you can do Elias's spell damage, as if he had cast. It's just that you try to get the extra hit in on your round. There's also Bless on him too, so we have a plus four. Or not a plus four, a plus one d four. Well, I, yeah, I think he's got bless on his effects, right? Yeah, he's got yeah. on him. Right. So just roll like a withering touch, which is at a plus five on Destrod, and and we'll see if that hits or not. And if it actually hits, we'll do the damage for Elias's damage. That's a hit. Oh, woot. I'm going to ignore that you're 60 foot away to begin with, and we'll just say... <laughs> he's you know, a ghost. Yeah. He's a ghost. That's a, That's all we need to know. Everyone, so All of you are a ghost at this point. No, just, we're just all for... ghosts. Can't we hit two then? <laughs> yeah, well, he's a special ghost. It's a 1d8 plus 6. All right. Okay. Go for it. With the plus 6 in the modifier and just throw a d8 out there, and I'll put the damage on him. Okay, 1d8 plus... And that's force damage. How do I do that? So in the modifier box there at the bottom left where your dice are at, you can scroll your wheel up while you're hovering over it to plus six. Or you can just type the number six. Or you can type the number six. And then you just grab the D, what is it, D10? D8. D8. And then you just throw the D8 in the combat tracker. I mean, in the uh, chat window. Or on top of Strahd. In the combat tracker. I'm kind of lost here. Just so do, do you, you see, see the little modifier box next to advantage and disadvantage? Click on that and type a number. Six. And then oh. just drag a D8 onto Strahd in the combat tracker. Okay, I got it. working well just it you got the six in the modifier right well, just throw the dice in the chat window there you go there you go five plus six is eleven and i'll just drag that eleven onto his damage yep all right it totally did it right okay so uh yeah you see the spirit of leo who looks uh, much more like a human guard in this form though, rather than some crazy flesh golem uh, sprint up with uh, supernatural speed uh, grab the sword that Elias had summoned, wields it and slashes into Strahd with it Vey Victus and with that we will wrap up for the night, alright everybody I hope you enjoyed it, uh, what did I say that episode title was going to be? In good spirits. In good spirits, yes. Um, now, when the fight started, I had allowed you guys to make some prep spells and buff yourself up before the fight. When we get back next week, I'm going to give Strahd that same opportunity. So we'll see if uh, if he can't buff himself up any. I really want you to have a fair fight with Strahd at the end here. Uh, even though he's been gobbling souls for, you know, ever since you've, you've destroyed him. Um all right. Until next week. Thank you, everyone. I hope you had a, a good session. All right. Thank you, Mike.